How are you today? My name is Michelle Connor. I'm your VCS for Living Environment, and we're going to be looking at possible options for a jigsaw activity today. Um, there's so many different ways to do this. One of the most obvious ones that most people are familiar with is in Zoom, um, creating breakout rooms. So that one we're not really going to cover because that's something that everyone's familiar with. I'm going to give you some additional options. So first, I just want to show you what kind of the uh, Teach Hub lesson looks like. Um, so for the jigsaw activity, um, it gives uh, the table with all the different sites and different articles that are attached um, and explains that the students are going to be broken up um, by pairs and then uh, be broken up into a different a pair with the same article and then a bigger group, one person from each article. So the Teach Hub gives the students kind of a basis on um, some information to look at, uh, some basic questions to answer before they're recombined with their group. So the students should be reading their article independently, then they meet up as a pair, and then after they meet up as a pair, they're going to continue to meet up um, as a full team, let's say. Um, so this is just what the Teach Hub lesson looks like. Um, and again, there's more independent questions for them to work through um, as part of the jigsaw activity. One thing you can do if there's too many, if you don't have a lot of attendance or there's too many students in your class, you could either use all four articles, use two articles, three articles, depending upon how you want to do it. It's totally up to you, but we give you four just so you have a nice option. So the first way we're going to look at is using a Google Doc, and I'm going to explain two different ways to use the same Google Docs. Um, so there's some basic just instructions that are pulled right from your Teach Hub lesson um, in this Google Doc. And then what you have is a table that where you would assign which students are going to read each article. These are... Um, Definitely something you would want to do beforehand. Again, if you have um, a little bit spotty of attendance, if you fill this out ahead of time, it's really not going to matter so much. Um, you'll have a list of students. If you have to change them on the fly, you can. Or while the students are doing maybe like a do now activity, you can go ahead and fill in what students are going to complete which article. For my school, we have a little bit of a spotty attendance. Um, so what I would do is that, that would be what I would do, is I would have um, the students log in, I'd have them do a do now, and while they're doing a do now, I would just write their first name so I know the groups are even. If you have a school with very consistent attendance, go ahead and fill this out ahead of time. It just makes your life a little bit easier. So once you have that, there's two ways to do this. So the first way, is to have a lead partner and a secondary partner. So you'd put their names in. So again, as they're reading their own article, just to make sure you don't have any gaps, you can go ahead and pair them up. So as they're reading their article, they're answering their questions in their Teach Hub lesson, you can go ahead and pair them up. Now, one way to go about doing it, you'd only really have to do it once, is for you as the teacher to set up all the meet links yourself. Um, you can have a lead partner, secondary partner. If you set up the meet links yourself, you don't even have to have a lead partner, secondary partner. You could just have partner A, partner B. Once these meet links are set up, you can reuse them for any jigsaw activity. Again, just leave the links, and then you can just change the partner names. If you have a little bit more of an independent class, um, one you know you can trust, I'd pick my lead partners or someone who I know is kind of a little bit tech savvy. And I would have my lead partner actually create their own meet link and paste it in this doc so their partner can get onto the same meet link as them. So it could either be done on the teacher front load or you could have a lead student as part of their pair create the meet link themselves and pop it in the chart. So this document would be assigned as students can edit in Google Classroom. For your second round, you can do the same thing. So for your second round, you could have a lead team member create a meet link for themselves and paste the meet link in. Or you, again, as the teacher, can create group meet links for jigsaw activities. And again, leave your meet links here. You can just make a copy of this document and use this for another jigsaw activity moving forward. Both are really good options. It depends 
kind of how much your students are tech savvy. But one thing I really like about doing a master Google Doc is you as the teacher will also have access to all the group's meet links. So you can pop in and out as you go. Same thing with the groups, you'll have the ability to pop in and out as you go, as long as this is a live document and their links are there. This may be something you wanna set up the day before and then actually run the jigsaw the next day. Um, maybe the first day activity can just have the students read the article and answer their questions independently and then have their group members set up the meet links. The only issue with that would again be attendance, but that's something hopefully one or two situations you could either combine groups or just change on the fly. Once this document is done, it's done and then I would make a copy so you have one in the background and then all you have to do is change the articles and then put in your partners as you go. So the next way we're going to look at this is on Jamboard. This is a little less conventional or a little less of a traditional jigsaw activity. However, it does do the same thing. Um, and it requires a lot less uh, separation and moving of the kids. Um, so what I have here is I have the four articles, one on each different slide, and the students' names you would put where the students' box is, and you would have every student that's working on the first article all on the first Jamboard slide or the second one on the second Jamboard slide. So instead of pairing them into just really small two-person pairs, what you can do is you can put them in groups for the whole one article where students can post their sticky notes about their findings, answering their questions, um, reflecting on each other's ideas in a little bit bigger of a group. And then your second round would be your groups where you have one person from each article put into here, and then the students, again, can add their sticky notes and findings. Um, there'd probably be one sticky note or two sticky notes per article. Um, this is a lot less setup, but it also is less interactive, although it's still interactive, it's a little less interactive than if the kids were in their own Google Meets, but it's another simple option. Um, and again, depending upon who's there, I would go ahead and add the students maybe while, again, they're doing the do now, especially if you have spotty attendance. And then while they're working on their independent article or while they're working on um, their article in their first group, I would go ahead and then set up the student names for the second group. So the students just have to find their name on the slide and that's the group that they will be involved in. And again, if you need more than four groups, you would just go ahead and just add another slide here. Super easy.